Hello. Thank you for coming. I would like to talk to you about processing the claims uh, from customers. Uh, I think this is the under-discussed topics. Usually, the conference do not have the detailed insight into this issue. Like, uh, it looks like uh, the encounter group activity for uh, the alcohol addicts. Like, hello, I'm John. I received the complaint today. Uh, hello, John. Let's applaud to him. It's fine to have them. Let's talk about this. First of all, I need to set the context. Uh, this is the favorite word uh, for all of us. So the feedback does not depend on quality. These are the basic things to understand uh, uh, what our processes are based on. Even the perfect team doesn't imply that customers uh, wouldn't ask any questions or be angry about something or asking to change something. Often, well, not often, but uh, sometimes we have cases when we have the perfect team, three persons, the translator, the experienced editor, and also the lead editor to have the perfect style of the text. And after a week, you get a feedback saying, you know, uh, my niece uh, speaks Russian, and she says nobody speaks like that. When, uh, how you did it, so and you need to change it. Well, this is the normal process to have, and the customer always is entitled to do this. But the most important thing is to know how to deal with that. The feedback and of the customer is always good to have. You need to treat it as the alternative to the option when they keep silent and leave. This way, they show they do care and uh, they want to change something about your performance uh, uh, to be satisfied eventually with your services. So you shouldn't be treating feedback as a negative thing to have. This is the outcome of any work and a chance to extend it. And the key important thing to remember is that it's important not only to respond to the feedback and address only the current issues, but also you need to think strategic and improve the processes for the future, analyzing these complaints and claims, trying to improve them for the future. When we talk about approaches dealing with the claims that are not universal, they depend on the company, on the scale of the company, on the principles and techniques of the company. The most important thing is to really uh, develop the goal you're going to implement and you're going to be aiming for. This could be one of the indicators for the company managers, one of the KPIs uh, impacting the salary of the employee. This could uh, also be important for the feedback of the performance. Uh, it uh, doesn't matter, but it's important to understand what your objective is. You need to be proactive. It's not only about the specific situation, but uh, you need to address the trends. You need to impact the trends, and you need to develop the strategic solutions. In our company, we eventually ended up with having the most important and key indicator as the uh, recurrent claims. Our goal is not to reduce them to zero, but uh, we um, really want to, to reduce the number of claims for the same reason, for the same issue. Because, you know, new people are coming, software is changing, it's okay to have complaints. But the uh, recurrent complaints, this is something we need to tackle. Our business is based on the relations between people. I believe it's most uh, people dependent. Uh, any person, any human can make a mistake. It's human to err. And it's important to listen to every specific uh, issue from every specific person at every stage uh, because uh, uh, there is a high risk uh, to process these claims uh, in the same manner. Uh, I often saw the situations when they analyze the claims from the customers only. This is not exactly the best approach. In the very beginning, we had it like this. But currently, we also are taking into account the feedback from managers and feedback from translators. 
this is the same approach. Uh, we do not prioritize the claims of customers, which are like, you know, shall be addressed immediately, and the manager's claims uh, could be ignored. That's not true. The, these are considered uh, on the same level, uh, on, on par. So the managers uh, can be also addressed in the process, or but also we have a mechanisms for uh, some kind of introverted uh, customers. They could use the automatic um, reply form and maybe indicate something that uh, something went wrong, or it could be anonymous, rather anonymous, rather than the email with the eyes of uh, the icon of the author of the email. So in the end, uh, uh, after the completion of uh, the job, they could notify that everything was nice, like Ivanova uh, was a sweetie to uh, submit the job before the deadline, and the editor was nice, and the other one performed well. Or they could give the negative feedback, and this case will be considered. Well, the same can be done by translators. They could notify that something went wrong in the process of work, and uh, this uh, claim will get not to the manager, but directly to the unit uh, working with the claims. Uh, and the situation will be analyzed uh, respectively, and the solutions will be suggested. Uh, so the same way as the positive response uh, that everyone can give, and uh, the manager will really uh, feel nice about that, and we will be immediate with our response. So we are approaching the process itself, the processing of claims. It begins or begins from registration. In in the previous slides, uh, you could see the examples of what we have in a separate mailbox. So we are getting this by uh, email, the letters uh, from the, uh, the client, and uh, also the information from the automatic form. And so the uh, secretary who defines the level of uh, dissatisfaction, in this case it's me, uh, it's a person who uh, defines how important uh, the claim is. So maybe there was a mistake, maybe there wasn't, but it just happens that uh, the client was enraged for some reason and this becomes a major type of claim. Then we define the general uh, category of uh, the mistake, like the linguistic mistake, the project manager mistake, the non-linguist uh, mistake, the software mistake, etc. And also we uh, estimate how um, uh, how important was this mistake and what were the risks involved for the client. Also, uh, if necessary, we have some uh, consultations with uh, participants. So if uh, it's uh, about uh, text recognition, then I, I would talk directly to uh, the person f from the layout department. And also in the end of the registration process, uh, in the end of the month, each head of the department in our company views uh, the list of uh, uh, claims uh, you know, which relate to the department, and they either confirm or add something to those uh, claims. Uh, but is it enough to have just one person if you are dealing with some serious uh, problems? If it's not about a uh, word ending, if it's not about uh, missed uh, deadlines, but if it's about the reputation of the company, if it's about some major penalty, or if a claim is about several areas like business processes, working mistakes, etc., in, in one claim. This can be a difficult issue for one person to deal with. In this case, we think that uh, the quality commission is necessary. So the quality commission, consisting of a chair, a secretary, uh, heads of the departments involved, and uh, also uh, some external uh, uh, consultant um, as a cherry on the cake. Um, this is a team we have uh, to um, 
consider a claim. So quite recently we added this uh, element of the external consultant. Uh, that's because we know each other and we have quite similar thinking. And the external view is sometimes quite useful because otherwise we can be not exactly objective. And in this case, some Catholic view from outside is uh, indispensable. Quite often it adds a lot to uh, the uh, minutes and the discussion of the claim. And overall, even in the eyes of the client, this kind of uh, approach is quite impressive. So they are impressed to see that this is not just an internal process, but you are also inviting an external specialist. Except for uh, the actual consideration of the claim, we also explain the process to the client, and they are quite satisfied with this comprehensive approach we have. So, uh, as a result of that, we uh, have business processes. Uh, I understand that you do not see uh, the details, but I will briefly explain you what that is. On the left, you can see the manager side processing of the claim. So, they are getting this letter uh, on top. Then uh, they are selecting the person to uh, process it and basically they are sending it to uh, the appropriate person. And this you can see on the uh, right part uh, of the picture, how the manager uh, gets the letter, how analysis is going on inside the company, and how the situation is uh, discovered uh, as a part of some uh, production processes. So uh, then the registration is happening, the quality commission uh, starts working, and some activities, some actions are defined in the end. So this was our basic approach for quite some time. About a year ago, we decided to update it a little bit. We had the impression that we were missing a huge part of the information because we were concentrating on particular cases, but we didn't see the general picture. So we had this impression that we are roaming around and we are missing some elephant in the room. So I analyzed this situation and I realized that we should uh, also add some classification, uh, not only to see what type of uh, mistake that is, like a linguistic mistake, but also to be able to see what exactly was wrong with the work. And we invented some kinds of uh, tags. So, if before we only said that it's a linguistic mistake, uh, right now we are specifying what it was, not following the glossary, using an uh, inappropriate uh, term, uh, wrong ending of the word, etc. And now we are able to see um, the general picture going one level deeper. And this is more useful for us because the reasons of claims are more tangible. And we were able to work with trends. Uh, we were able to notice what's changing in our work. After collecting the statistics, we analyzed the situation and realized that Microsoft Excel was maybe not the most convenient tool to process them. And also, in the Excel, you need to have a particular question to get the answer. But the general data processing is, in fact, not implemented. We started testing different software solutions for analytics and visualization. Power BI was one of them, um, and this is another Microsoft product. Uh, this is something we were missing before, because uh, in our situation it's a perfect fit.
I will show you a report on tags uh, which uh, we have analyzed. This is the uh, last but one report we had. Uh, this form is interactive. You can click any of the fields and uh, the report adapts. Basically, it unites data from different tables. Uh, on the left, uh, you can see the column of filters. Uh, on top, we can select uh, the global uh, reasons of uh, uh, claims, like, for instance, assignment uh, failures. And in this case, we will see only the tags related to that kind of uh, uh, mistake. So we can view information on each of the particular tags. You can see information from the previous uh, periods, and uh, I will expand on that later. And we can see the comparison with uh, previous uh, periods. And also you can see this arc, which is the total number of uh, tags. And we saw a big uh, decrease of the number of uh, claims but the number of tags increased. So the situations which still remain are generally more complicated than before. Uh, each of the tags can be viewed by numbers and you can also trace uh, the change of the number of each particular tag over time. And this is something we process uh, uh, in the work of the commission. So we can track which kinds of mistakes increase and decrease in numbers, and we can compare them by category. So for instance, uh, we had uh, quite a big number of uh, project manager performance issues, and this is because uh, we hired new employees, and this text shows us uh, show us what are the weakest links and what kind of training and what kind of informational materials we should uh, provide to them. So this gives quite a good picture of uh, what's going on in the company. And what are the tasks of the commission which they have this kind of a report? We have three main tasks. First is to discover the main negative trends and um, Quite often uh, the trends are stable, the most popular mistakes, uh, but uh, a more interesting case if we have a sudden surge of some uh, kind of tags. So the stable ones are the ones which are difficult to influence because uh, we quite often have already done everything we could. But if it's a new mistake, uh, they enable uh, some quick actions and quite often uh, this can influence other kinds of mistakes as well. Later, the Commission develops uh, actions and activities on how to reduce uh, a number of uh, particular tags. So the problem uh, with uh, claims is measurability. So we have processed the situation and how can we count if we were successful or we weren't. I understand that uh, this methodology is not uh, an ideal one, but still we can see the general picture. We are able to understand if we manage to uh, decrease the number or we uh, haven't managed to do that. So when we have uh, uh, selected these uh, three kinds of uh, tags, we were able to reduce uh, the total number of uh, uh, tags. Uh, the interesting part about this system is that uh, this report is quite uh, simple uh, on its basic level, but we can unfold it, so to speak, and uh, at the end of the day you can see almost any kind of data that is present in your TMS. 
what's the most interesting here is that we can see the statistics of the client, uh, uh, the statistics of the performers, uh, the statistics of the total amount of work processed, and you can imagine what is a huge amount of information that can be connected to each tag. And it supersedes our expectations. When it comes to documentation, we can develop a classification of preventive actions. Uh, right now, most of them are manual. Um, they are just recommendations, so we do not have a well-defined structure. And I want to create it. We already have some general outline. Uh, this is already an understandable system. Also, I would like to integrate those tags into TMS. So we started using tags two years ago. A year ago we started using Power BI and it, it was like a test project for us. Uh, so uh, there, there was no system of tags and uh, we only had them somewhere in a notepad, but uh, I think we will proceed with including the tags into TMS. Unfortunately, you cannot send any claims today because it's Saturday and we only receive claims uh, till the end of Friday. I have a question. Maxim, I, I'm here. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful uh, presentation. I'm Masha from uh, the Technolex company, and it was quite interesting for me to listen to your story and uh, the description of your process. I've got two questions. One of them is simple, and another one is more complicated. Maybe I haven't understood something. So first one is about your external expert. Is this just one person, or you are selecting someone depending on the kind of the project? Well, this is one person who has a wide uh, range of competences, who has skills as a translator and as a manager, and as at this stage, it is sufficient for us because we are, are satisfied with the quality of feedback we are getting. So that's a universal uh, person for you. Okay. And you have also said that your analysis uh, shows that uh, uh, for simple uh, problems, you uh, have a, a decreasing trend and increasing trend for the complicated pro uh, problems. Well, I meant that the overall number of uh, claims is decreasing, but uh, uh, the percentage of the more complicated ones is uh, increasing because um, we are adding tags. It's uh, the growth stage, and this is why you can see a growing number. So it's not the problem that's becoming more uh, sophisticated, it's just your classification that's growing. Yeah, it's a classification. Thank you. Maxim, thank you for your presentation. My question. Uh, what's the average time you are spending for processing of a claim? Of course, all of them are diff uh, different. But uh, uh, do you ever have situations, especially when you involve your uh, external uh, consultant, when uh, the client wants to get an answer in 30 minutes and you have to involve the specialist who is busy? Yeah, thank you for your question. I did not include it into the presentation, but we uh, make a difference uh, between uh, preventive actions and corrective actions. So if something needs to be done uh, right now, like to add something to the glossary or to uh, correct a file, this is being done immediately and this is resolved before we analyze the situation. As a commission, can only add to the corrective actions and to develop some preventive actions because the manager is not someone who thinks how to solve this problem in the future. It's the commission that does it. As for the time frame, the normal uh, claim processing time is 
seven days. And that's a normal business process. This is how we explain this to the clients. And overall, they are satisfied with that. When it comes to registration and to the work of the commission, usually it takes uh, half an hour, up to one hour to register a claim. And when it comes to the meetings of the commission, it may take like four or five hours. Thank you. Maxim. Yes, Svetlana. Thank you, Maxim, for your uh, presentation. I uh, saw the scale of client dissatisfaction uh, in one of your slides. Is it uh, done by your uh, clients themselves, or you have some specialists who do that? OK. So uh, this is uh, not rated by the uh, client, and of course, uh, we have a big number of clients. It would be difficult to explain our system to each particular client. And uh, it's us who classify that. And we have three categories, like a minor the claim, a major claim, and a medium uh, claim. So a minor claim is uh, when the client just informs that uh, something was uh, incorrect. It's not uh, any kind of uh, not any kind of claim that entails uh, some actions. So they want to, to correct some minor detail. Maybe that's a subjective view, etc. Major claim in our business processes means that there are some indicators of serious reputation loss for the company or if there are fines involved. So these are the indicators of a major uh, claim. So you have a uh, types uh, types of uh, mistakes, but they are not related to that. Here you are just uh, estimating the emotional uh, level. Yes, that's correct, because there are uh, situations when uh, the client is enraged, but there was no mistake. So we cannot uh, criticize uh, the, the translator because there was no fault uh, on the part of the translator and still th the client has this perception. That's quite an interesting approach. Thank you. We could take another question if you have any. Well, the quality committee, is it engaged in how, do they help to the managers to regulate the process for the customers if it's a complicated claim when the manager is not able to identify what needs to be fine-tuned? Uh, it's the justified claim, but maybe you have this emotional feedback, and but this is the high scale customer, but you need some time to identify whether the claim is justified or you need to uh, maybe finish something at all. Usually we don't have the situations like these. They are very rare to have. Maybe I can think of uh, several of them only. Mostly the questions about the current operations are addressed and tackled on the level of the project management unit. Every manager has the um, superior manager helping him to address the issue. And uh, we don't engage this committee that would analyze the case and give the uh, detailed explanation to the client. But we rarely face the issues like that. Thank you, Maxim.